So Josh Hawley gave us a, uh, a speech at the, uh, what is it, the Conservative co conservative Conference in Orlando. In fact, he was the keynote speaker. And what he said was so bat crap crazy that uh, that Axios show was like, oh, can we get him to say it on our thing oh. so that um, Got it. so that we can we can make uh, some hay out of this? I have a copy of the speech here somewhere. Um, it is well, it gives you a sense of where um, where Holly is going. He is trying to appeal to the theocratic evangelical heart of the Republican Party. He is also trying to capture the imagination of the aggrieved white man. And he's trying to do it as if he has a populist economic message. This is how he's setting himself up for his 2024 run. I think it probably is maybe 2028, but here he is. Senator, you gave a pretty hot speech at the National Conservatism Conference in Orlando. You talked about the left's attack on men. Pause it for one second. Oh, it's a hot speech. Yeah. Ooh. But understand, like, let's be clear on what this is. And I mean, I think everybody knows it, but this is really even just more um, egregious than, 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 than you, you know, these interviews. This is all like, all these questions are pre-negotiated. Like they know exactly. We're going to bring you on. We're going to talk about your speech. We're just going to set it up. It's going to tee you up, and you know we'll ask some questions that that explore. That's all. You're great. You're great. You, you, that speech was so hot. Yes, yeah, spicy you, speech. They, you, you were just so hot. It was. It was like people are talking about it. It's great, and we're going to get it out there more. All right. And, Holly's and so hot right now. He's, he's so hot right now. Honestly, nobody's talking about anything but that speech, uh, Senator. Really good stuff. Okay, you ready? <laughs> All right, let's start it over. Senator, you gave a pretty hot speech at the National Conservatism <laughs> Conference in Orlando. You talked about the left's attack on men of America. Yeah. Why masculinity <laughs> as your new big issue? Well, I think what the left is doing is attacking America. They're saying that America is oh. systemically oppressive and men are systemically responsible. What's a man to you? Paint a picture. What's a man? Well, a man is a father. Let me just look at like, I mean, are, are we, like, I just, like, in How is that the follow-up? How is that the follow-up? What, what, because that's the, you got to get the terms down. Okay, so they're attacking masculinity. Well, they're attacking masculinity because they're saying America is oppressive. And when they're saying that, they're saying men are oppressive. Now, did he say white man? Because yes, that's no, what he's talking about. At the beginning, he said white men. I'm the, the okay, pull, pull mic back. from Axios. Pull, pull it back a little bit. Of America. Yeah. Why masculinity as your new big issue? Well, I think what the left is doing is attacking America. They're saying that America is systemically oppressive and men are systemically responsible. What's a man to you? Paint a picture. Oh, What's a man? Well, a man is a father, a man is a husband, a man is somebody who takes responsibility. As conservatives, we've got to call men back to responsibility. We've got to say that spending your time not working, and we have more and more men who are not working, spending your time on video games, spending your time watching porn online while doing nothing is not good for you, your family, or this country. So a viewer's watching this and they're thinking, really, what the liberals are doing are going to push me to watch Pornhub more or play Donkey Kong more? Do you mean that literally? Well, what I mean literally is that I think the liberal attack, the left-wing attack on manhood says to men, you're part of the problem. It says that your, your masculinity is inherently problematic. It's inherently oppressive. What's your basis for what, linking that, that to what liberals or the left, as you would say, do? Is that based on data or based on a hunch? Well, it's policy over many years. I mean, if you look at the policy of deindustrialization, those are policy choices Mike pursued over many years. I've looked wait, at wait, how does that connect to porn? Oh, well, you've got, you've got Hold on, pause it for one second. That's not the question. How does that uh, connect to the left? I, Industrialization is a, is a feminist cause against men. You know what this is, though? It's He mentions it because he can't really say that he wants American masculinity and white masculinity, which he's trying to appeal to, to be intrinsically linked to capitalism and your ability to bring home the bacon. I mean, he kind of exactly what it is. Right. Oh yeah, and that's the religious. The the that's the yeah. that's the way that God meant it. Yeah, men need to be working more, less fewer women working. Uh, so 
Yeah, they need to be doing man stuff like golfing and uh, going to pageants and uh, eating fast food. And uh, here is where we learn that uh, porn did not exist until there was the industrialization. Yeah, you go back. So it's pretty gay to be uh, watching porn, I guess. Well, if it's like gay. problematic. It's no, but it's saying woman porn. Your your masculinity is inherently problematic. It's inherently oppressive. What's your basis for linking that to what liberals or the left, as you would say, do? Is that based on data or based on a hunch? Well, it's policy over many years. I mean, if you look at the policy of deindustrialization, those are policy choices Mike pursued over many years. I've looked. Wait, at wait. How does that connect to porn? Oh well, you've got you've got men, 16 oh, million wow. men, Mike, who are idle, who don't have anything to do. Now, partly that's their own responsibility, but also partly it's because jobs have dried up in many cities across America and yeah, rural areas too. I think you put together lack of jobs, you put together fatherlessness, you put together the social messages that we teach our kids in school. I think we've got to confront that and its effects. This is yeah. not going to go well for him. Yeah. Because, you know, you want white men? Don't go after the porn, you idiot. <laughs> or, or video games well, in general. This is, his attempt to, this is his attempt to pull back on the, um, on the, uh, on the, the high bandwidth internet. That is going to uh, cities and towns. You, you That's need why to you didn't support infrastructure. You need to eliminate. <laughs> you need to eliminate the uh, broadband. Because that's what's happening. These people are there. These guys are losing their jobs. They're getting broadband and they're watching Pornhub all day. I can't wait to see Peter Thiel go to war with Josh Hawley. Can't wait. This is going to be an amazing like you want to see this culture war. That's the culture war I'm looking forward to in a couple of years. It would be funny to run as a Republican and be like, um, all your issues are making it so people can watch porn in public places and stuff like that. There is going to be a moment in 2024 during the primary where Hawley and Cruz face off about porn and Holly's going to bring up him liking that porn. Uh, well, they're, 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 they're at the bottom of the barrel for the evangelical voters. And they're just, you know, well, fighting all, to the death. All, all kidding aside, this is, you know, this is what, what a Josh Holly is doing right now. He is going to, the, the plan that he has obviously is something to the effect of like, I need to shore up the evangelical base. And so I'm going to be talking about things like porn and idleness and the devil's play things and et cetera, et cetera, which is just, you know, I mean, it's the same thing that he could have said 30 years ago or 50 years ago or 20 years ago or 10 years ago. And then he's going to pivot to this deindustrialization as he locks up. And so that when he talks about deindustrialization, his evangelical uh, support is going to hear like he's against porno. And uh, and that's and that's how this works. This what, is what I, find interesting, what I find interesting about him is, is he's sort of this cross section between evangelical base or even a Christian coalition from the 80s base, you know, the, the two of them and the IDW. I don't think one transfers over to the other. I don't think that like, you know, the nerds on the Internet who hate women and, you know, watch uh, Jordan Peterson online are going to be, you know, in the same group as, as he is. But you never know. Oh, I don't know about that because the masculinity is just an attack on women. And this isn't Tell this me isn't, more about that, Sam. Well, you know, but this isn't the IDW thing. This is this is Rush Limbaugh talking about the feminine. No, 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 no. The de deindustrialization does not speak to an evangelical. Oh, no, no, no. I that's my point though. He's yeah. it will it will be coded language. He it will resonate, but he is shoring up his 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 religious base first. And then he starts to pivot to the deindustrialization, you know, where he's gotten some like, you know, talk about anti-monopoly and anti big tech and that stuff. He's trying to have it two ways. He's trying to have it two ways. He's trying to have the evangelical base and he's trying to tap into uh, what Trump was able to tap into, which are those like online young men um, that Bannon was able to identify given his past work in the video game industry. If you read Devil's Bargain on this very topic um, and he just really quickly, what he wants to be able to do is say, I don't know where he gets that 16 million men figure, but he wants men who feel disaffected from society men who may be lonely men who may be playing video games because they aren't able to contribute and like live up to this ideal of masculinity that people like holly is setting up for him um in a capitalist society or who may be you know having a dependency on porn 
it's the symptoms of our fucked up society that need to be blamed. So blame them and I will alleviate that. And then finally, if you are able to elect me, I'll solve it. And you'll be able to exist in this society that is in inherently rigged against you. But That's that would require, and I completely agree with you, Emma, that's a strategy, but I think that would require men who are in those spaces to be able to self diagnose themselves. Yeah, most people who are addicted to porn don't recognize that this, this is problem or not problem, that it's a symptom of some sort of societal insecurity that exists and, and is, 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 is strengthened because or conditioned by mass toxic masculinity. That's not something that like they just wake up one day and realize. I think he's really going to struggle with this. It's hard to pivot from, from ev evangelical into this space where, uh, it's just the opposite, you know, beliefs. I don't know. I mean, the reason why Trump was good at that was because the if you have to convince the evangelicals last, that's easier than convincing the evangelicals first and then bringing in the rest. Donald Trump was a misogynist. He was a rapist. He was a philanderer. He was, you know, the worst toxic masculine, but he embodied that. No one looks at Josh Hawley and is like, well, this guy picks up a lot of girl. He's not. No, I agree. I just think that's, I agree with you. I, I just think, it's right. the, I think it's the strategy. And I think Agreed. that there's going to be a lot of conservatives who mislead people who are feeling the effects of isolation and atomization in our society and push them towards toxic areas um and i don't have a ton of you know sympathy for but at the same time this is a real this is a real constituency and uh you know th that's what no, i think you're right but but one one more thing just keep in mind like i'm not you know i could be wrong and play this clip in four years or eight years or whatever it is there's a reason why these 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 autocrat dictator types are macho you know there's a reason for that. There's a strength. There's a, I feel secure with them, whether I even consciously recognize what that is and where that comes from. It's it's mythical. And I think that the Democrats and progressives or whoever, we have to really think about what it means to deconstruct that mythology that is so deeply ingrained in us and how we counter that with our own form of mythology. And I think, you know, Obama in 2008 was very good at that, whether he was, he was conscious or not. Mm. Good point. Let's go to the I. Good point, Emma. Team. <laughs> Watch out, Josh Holly.